In the first part of this video, I aim to save a lot of time. A lot of time that you might otherwise be stuck with a chronic illness. Also, a time where you are spending a whole lot of money on all kinds of treatments. For example, Timo, who spent a lot of money on detoxing, blood washing, brain retraining, you name it. All in all, I paid like 30, maybe 30 or 35,000 euros for my healing, which didn't help at all. And the second part of this video is about finding ways to help all the other millions who are missing, who are suffering from a chronic illness, who have no dreams, no hopes maybe, but who desperately want to come back to society and to life. My name is Daniel, and when I had a chronic illness, and when I laid in bed for years on end, I swore to do whatever I can in my life to make sure that no one else will suffer the way that I did. And in those years, especially in 2016, 2017, and 2018, I was reading research almost every day. All I wanted to do is to understand what was wrong with me. So books, research papers, uh, listening to scientists, you name it. I wanted to figure it out. And recently, when I stumbled upon everything that I collected in those days, I was amazed. And I wanted to share that. And I did in my previous YouTube video. But unfortunately, the video is not really performing that well. And also, after I uploaded it, I was like, wait a minute. This is actually pretty weird. Why is nobody talking about this? Because most of the research is older than 20 years. That means that if the, this stuff was well known, I didn't have to suffer from a chronic illness. I didn't have to find cures. I didn't have to spend any money. Why? And I became a little bit upset because I'm still up to this day receiving a lot of negative feedback, which is, I think, normal and part of the job. But sometimes I would really wish people to know this. So allow me to share again the research that I shared as well in the last YouTube video. And I think it's important to repeat this. The symptoms, and I'm talking here especially about the mind-body symptoms, not about the stress symptoms. The symptoms are created by neurological and glandular changes in the body. These changes are, in turn, triggered by signals from the limbic system working through the HBA axis and vagus nerve. The nervous system switches to fight or flight mode due to accumulated emotional stress. And I have to emphasize emotional stress here. Because of that, the limbic system in the brain detects an undesirable situation, a danger. It then stimulates the hypothalamus, which stimulates the pituitary gland, which stimulates the adrenal glands, which changes the muscles, blood circulation, digestion, and as well, the immune system. It doesn't mean that these things will be stimulated all at once. Usually there is only one or two at a time. The changes in circulation cause brain fog and dizziness. Changes in digestion can cause irritable bowel syndrome. Changes to the immune system can cause infections, swollen glands, a sore throat, and feverishness. The hypothalamus synthesizes the optic nerve and disrupts the, blood, the body clock, which can cause blurred vision, light and sound sensitivity, and sleep disturbances. The changes or tension in the muscles make the mitochondria burn up the ATP and glucose storage too fast. The muscles will then switch to an inefficient fuel source with lactic acid as a byproduct. This causes fatigue, muscle pain, and headaches, and it justifies the feelings of patients who claim to feel as if they had run a marathon. The last example is about post-exertional malaise. I made a video about post-exertional malaise over a year ago, and I really should have shared this stuff in that video because I still receive up to, up to this day a lot of negative feedback on that that I'm ignoring the signs and those kind of things. So 
Why do you think that everyone from scientists, doctors, researchers, uh, other influencers, people from other programs, why do you think they are all ignoring this science? Can you let me know in the comments? And I understand that reading that alone is not enough because then you still don't have a clue because, you know, what to do then? And that was where I jumped in. I wanted to know everything about it. And if the emotions were the reason underneath the symptoms, then triggering myself with emotions had to mean that my symptoms would increase. And indeed, it did. That also meant that releasing the emotions should mean that my symptoms would disappear. And this is something that I was obsessed with for many years on end. And I think I went a little bit too far with that because I was driven and I couldn't think of anything else in the years. The emotional work that we're doing is not like therapy or regular EMDR that you can do with a therapist. We really aim to find the exact emotion that is causing the current symptoms. And what happens then is that people start shaking, shivering, crying, uh, burping, vomiting, you name it. And indeed, afterwards, the symptoms disappear. First, I tried this on myself. And then over the course of three, four years, I did whatever I could could to, to make sure that everyone would experience that. And I've right now coached over 1000 clients and I became really good at it. And that's what I do in the release program. And then I did it and the symptoms were gone. Bam, spontaneous release, symptoms gone. And I was like, nah, this is, this is unreal. This is, <laughs> this is amazing. And from one day to another, it stopped. So I, I had a condition for 20 years and it stopped within 30 minutes. And in the past five years, I've had great results of releasing these types of symptoms. Now, most of the people that I saw, they identified with the label chronic fatigue syndrome, ME-CFS, and they usually had fatigue, pain, post-exertional malaise, sleep deprivation, etc. But along the way, I worked with all kinds of other symptoms that I also managed to release with them on demand. And once our clients manage to release their symptoms and become symptom free, they feel absolutely amazing. They are calm, they can sleep well, their brain is um, quiet, but that doesn't mean that the symptoms will never come back. If they do, they just have to repeat the process. And then we're going to shed layer after layer after layer and this is the recovery journey in those years that i was so focused and obsessed about finding out everything about the release process i never thought that i would become an influencer because it's basically not my passion but it turns out i have to because otherwise who is going to spread this message it's probably not commercially interesting other people might lose their business if this knowledge comes out. So yeah, here I am trying to become an influencer. So now the second part, I need your help because I want to change this. I think that everyone has suffered more than enough. So let's do it together. We need to do certain things to make this video pop up in the YouTube algorithm. And things that you could do is to watch this video and maybe watch it again without maybe looking at it. Comment on it. Share this, especially, for example, in Facebook groups where people are still stuck or promoting all kinds of things. Please send the link to them. And I would have wished for other influencers to, to contact me so that, so that I could stay in my role as a, as a teacher. But at a certain moment, I realized that was not going to happen. Maybe they didn't like me. Maybe I am too direct. I don't know what I did wrong, but I have to do it on my own, unfortunately. I noticed that the people in the release program, they are not really a part anymore of those Facebook groups. They 
tend to leave them because they know exactly what to do and they don't need that anymore. Plus, we also offer uh, a community ourselves, uh, a buddy program where people can do the work together. And sometimes that's also a disadvantage because they don't share this work, unfortunately. And talking about our community, let me share a story. And I can't really share the screenshot because of uh, privacy issues. But today I read a story about a young woman in our program who feels really good because she recently managed to release her crash, her CFS crash. And before she was so afraid of having a crash, but when she learned to release the underlying stressor and become symptom free, that changed everything for her. And I also wish that to, to happen for you and for everyone else. So thank you very much for your help. Please like, share, comment, watch again. Uh, share, did I say that already? <laughs> and let's change this recovery world together for good, forever. And if you are part of the millions missing, then know that we can change.